first from just down the road in Notty Ash, here's Doddy. Jack Frost Dancing lightly on your grass Have you ever tasted apples With the dew still on the skin And have you ever loved somebody You may never see again So take your time to touch the morning Someday Take your time to touch the morning Before it slips away And take your time to taste sunshine While it hangs there on the trees Take your time to touch the morning Touch the morning underneath Take time to touch the morning Touch the morning on your knees
What a year 1981 was, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the scrapbook here. What a year 1981 was. Big events, little events, sporting events, romance. 1981 was the year of the wedding. Ladies, the wedding. Wasn't it marvellous? Did you see it on TV? I think Ken and Deirdre are going to be very, very happy. But they... <laughs> oh, the royal wedding. Oh, that was marvellous. Down our street, all the tables were out in the street, teapots, cutlery, all the... I thought to myself, I'm glad we're not being evicted. <laughs> <laughs> was one of them, though. Man, it was a pity she got the names the wrong way around, wasn't it? Because now, you know, she's legally married to a fellow called Charlie Prince. <laughs> now the baby. <clears throat> the Princess of Wales said she hopes the Blue Peter programme doesn't, you know, have a competition to choose the baby's name. <laughs> because she thinks that Shep and Patch are silly names. <laughs> It must have been a great family day. When, when Prince Charles told his dad about it, do you know the Duke of Edinburgh went mad? He dashed out on the balcony of Buckingham Palace and he shouted out to everyone, 180! Because <laughs> when Prince Charles said he'd like a little Welsh son and heir, he meant that he wouldn't mind a fortnight in Anglesey. <laughs> Prince Charles admits. Prince Charles does admit that the only reason he decided to start a family quickly was to give him an excuse to take the Beano again. <laughs> 1981, 1981 was the year of the Rubik Cube. Do you know there are over 150,000 different ways of flinging it through the window? <laughs> it's brought a new adjective into the English language. Men now, they come home after a hard day's work and they sink in the armchair and say, Hey, Gladys, I'm rubik <laughs> There is a solution to the Ruby Cube. It's a three pound lump hammer. <laughs> Have you heard about the Irish Ruby Cube? It's all green. <laughs> and in the shape of a triangle. 1981 was the year of the shuttle. <laughs> a fantastic achievement, the shuttle. The American shuttle, 30,000 ceramic tiles up in space. <laughs> Next week, the Russians are going to try and put a full gents up into orbit. <laughs> Sportsman. Our sportsman did well. Our sprinter. What's that fabulous man? The, the fastest man alive. What's his name? Um, Sebastian. Yes, I didn't like to say. It. <coughs> no, since since he did so well, you know, every baby that's born now is called. And now we've got thousands of little Sebastians running all over Britain. <laughs> Sebastian um, um, Co. Co. Of course. And you, his sister Tess, and, uh, and his brother, and his brother in the RAF, Will. And, uh, <coughs> and his little Spanish Uncle Frank. <laughs> well, he can play for hours. <laughs> 1981 was the year that Britain saw a boom in job centres. And <laughs> 1981 would go down as the year of the plastic surgeon. Barbara Streisand had a foot, had a foot off the end of her nose. Now she only wears two shoes. Somebody said, <coughs> somebody said to one of these plastic surgeons, what happens to all the little bits that you cut off that you've got over? Well, he said, actually, they're all glued together, and that's how we made Barry Manilow. <laughs> But he wasn't all. <laughs> 1981. 1981, of course, was the year that Barbara Woodhouse bit her lip and caught rabies. <laughs> Tommy Doherty. Tommy Doherty announced that he was going to be a father again, which is nice to know he can still manage something. <laughs> See, 1981, for songs, it was a great year for me for songs. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I found a great song, a lovely song. A song all about children, for children, sung by children all over the world. A lovely song called Hold My Hand. Hello world of yesterday, we're looking out to find a way for the children. For the children. With a happy song and a happy face, we can make this world a better place for the children. For the children. All the nations join and sing, the bells around the world will ring for the children. For the children. What we have, we'd like to share and show you all that the children care for the children. For the children. And we sing.
wide We can always reach to the other side For the children For the children We can send our love We can send some smiles In love and peace a thousand miles For the children For the children We shall be their guiding light And sing along into the night For the children What a wonderful place this world would stay If we all held hands each and every day Like the children And we're singing out around the world To every other boy and girl We're holding hands and reaching out Here in the study, I like to study all different kinds of comedy, and there's, there's lots of different ways of making people laugh. Well, you can't make anybody laugh at all, actually. You can only give people laughter, because it's all inside you here, you see, in your chuckle muscle. Happiness, that's what it's all about. And some comedians can tell, say funny things, and some comedians can say things funny. There's another exclusive band of humorists who can tell a joke without saying a word. They just do it with mine, their hands. And tonight, we have with us one of the greatest exponents of the art of mind, ladies and gentlemen, George Carl.
What is your name? Doris. <laughs> Doris? Doris. <clears throat> you mean Boris. You can't say Doris. No, I can't say Boris. Can I? Can I? Look, Doris. Did, did you have a Christmas tree in your house? Yeah. And who bought you the Christmas tree? Me dad. Your dad? And what did you hang on the Christmas tree? Me dad. <laughs> What would you, uh, what you would like for next Christmas? A construction kit or something you could, you could build yourself a new head? Uh, <clears throat> what would you like? I'd like a gat. A gat? A gat. A vampire gat. Oh, a vampire gat, yes. <clears throat> yes. You do. You're a little tiny tip, aren't you?
Now, I want you to watch my lips very, very closely. Would you like a big bottle of brown beer and some brown bread and butter or a shandy? Shandy. <laughs> <coughs> I'm very pleased to hear you say that. Uh, are you going to do the alphabet backwards? No. Good. What? <laughs> you're, not, you're very fun on football. Very keen on football, are you? Yeah. Do you play? Yeah. What position do you play? Goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I'm afraid, you wouldn't think you were 250 years old, would you? I'm afraid that you, you've got to go back in the suitcase. I don't want to go in the suitcase. You've got to go in the suitcase. I won't go in the suitcase. Because I'm going to sing. I'll go in the suitcase. <laughs> Everybody loves a heartbreaking song to sing to. Everybody loves a heartbreaking sweet melody. Everybody has a heartbreaking dream to cling to. Everybody loves a heartbreaking song, including me. Love makes the world go round There's no denying But sometimes memories They leave you crying Love is never easy to explain No one ever knows who's to blame Everybody sings a heartbreaking song for someone. Everybody sings a heartbreaking sweet melody. Every lover has a sweetheart in dreams to cling to. Everybody sings a heartbreaking song, including you. Everybody loves a heartbreaking song, including me. That was a great new heartbreaking song, and here's a great, great heartbreaking song. Tears for souvenirs are all you left. of a love you never met I just can't believe you could forget me after all those happy hours we spent tears have been my own Consolation But tears can't mend A broken heart I must confess So let's forgive And forget Turn our tears of regret Once more To tears of happiness The good old days. These are the good old days now, while you're warm and walking. The, <laughs> uh, this, 
the prices in the old days must have been marvellous. My granddad reckons he could go to the local hop, the local dancer at the foot hall, and for a shilling, he could go, he could boogie the night away, have a packet of crisps, chips on the way home, and still have change of a shilling. He couldn't do that today. They blocked the hole up when he was getting in. It's, <laughs> it's, we've got to, it's no use looking backwards. We can look forward into the future. Science fiction. Just like that, science fiction. Oh, I love it. UFO. Now, <laughs> we, we all know that what that means. I mean, UFO. Go up to any policeman and he'll say, oh, I see. No, I mean, aliens from outer space. Have you ever seen a bug-eyed monster from outer space, Mrs? You married one? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I mean, that big slimy thing with huge tentacles. <laughs> That's him. Oh. <laughs> You know, yeah, last, last Sunday afternoon, I saw this strange flash in the sky. It was a parachutist. He'd pulled the wrong zip. <laughs> <laughs> there are such things as aliens watching us all the time with little beady eyes. They're called VAT men. <laughs> I was going home from Blackpool one night, and I thought, I'll go Squires Gateway. You know where all the, all the sand hills are. I was driving the car along, and suddenly, in the car's headlights, just like in that Close Encounters, because I used to have Close Encounters, but I had them widened on the National Hill. <laughs> just... just I saw these two huge domes going. Mm, mm. I, said, I said, what are those? He said, they're dunes. I said, by Joe, she's a big girl, isn't she? <laughs> eh? I've seen them on the telly. These alien beings, that fellow with the pointed ears from Burnley. What's his name? Um, Spock, Spock, that's him. He writes books about babies as well, clever dick. <laughs> um, and the captain of the Enterprise, what's his name? The captain of the Enterprise? Kirk, 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 yes. Yorkshire people think it's cake. <laughs> like a piece of Kirk. <laughs> He's always saying, beam me down, Mr. Spock. So I hit him with a plank. <laughs> Some people don't believe in these sort of things. They're called septics. Septics. They don't even believe in penicillin. That's why they're septic. <laughs> you don't like those little Martians, do you? They laugh at you when you're peeling potatoes. <laughs> I saw... I saw a film the other day, one of these films is about this astronaut. He shot off into space, <laughs> twice around the galaxy, stopped up at Mars for a little work lesson play. And when he came back to Earth, when he came back here to Earth, he was a hundred years into the future. A hundred years, he had a time slip. And he'd, a hundred years, and everything had changed, a hundred years into the future. There were no road works on the M1. Um, <laughs> Reggie Ben was still trying to get in. <laughs> Look through the window. Amazing! There were signs of life on Liverpool docks. <laughs> I switched the TV on and Stow in the Wold were playing Everton for the Cup at Wembley. <laughs> That's what I thought, Everton. But the, the BBC... The BBC was still trying to increase the licence fees and still giving pencils away on Cracker Jack. <laughs> The Isle of Man held the balance of power in world domination after inventing the first nuclear-powered Manx cat. <laughs> Hercuts her her were on the national health, but of course you still you could pay and have your own basin. And <laughs> this is all space. What about that moon rock? The astronaut, the astronauts brought back from the moon. They knew it was moon rock because it had moon written all the way through it. <laughs> Patrick Moore. He's space mad. Every morning, Patrick Moore does, he, does the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. That's just to get the top of his egg. <laughs> Patrick Moore looked through his window the other afternoon and he saw this spacecraft, you know, floating all around his garden. Then he realised he'd left the fly mow in gear. <laughs> there was this bright, dazzling light. I saw a most unusual shaped object. Then just as fast, the woman over the road pulled the curtains and I don't know what I saw now. <laughs> so, I turned around, and there was a spaceman leaning against our mangle. Well, he gave me a bit of a turn. <laughs> you know, a few songs, a couple of jokes. And, and a tap dance on three of his legs. And I said, I said, do you come in peace? He took his head off. He said, actually, I'll come in two pieces. He was like a huge thing in green tights with like four or five legs. He looked like a cross between Rudolf Nureyev and, you know, the Hulk fighting in a sprout bag. And <laughs> I am going to vaporise you and everybody else on Earth. Oh, I said, oh, yes, vaporise, and you'll pick up all the trousers. He said, he said you are uncivilised. I said, you can't do that. I said, you can't blow us all up now. He said, I'm going to annihilate you. I said, you can't do that. I said, haven't you just paid four weeks' rent in advance? I thought, I'll try a bit of psychology on him. So I grabbed all of him, shoved him in the outside loo, tied the chain around his neck, 
shoved a bucket on his head and stuck a low lavatory brush up the back of his jacket. He said, it's no good trying to bribe me with jewellery. <laughs> Standing on this spot at this very moment, I can actually feel the gravitational pull of the earth. Either that or these jockey trunks have shrunk again. <laughs> We're living in a science fiction world now. Everything's quick frozen. It is if you go out in the car park tonight. <laughs> Every Friday night, you can see all the housewives in the supermarkets with their heads in the deep freeze, rooting around for something plump and fresh. <laughs> this weekend, I took one of those oven-ready ducks home. When I got it thawed out, it turned out to be a midget. It fell in at Christmas. <laughs> a man... A man wants at a football match. We are standing there, and next to him is this tall, blonde, rather good-looking chap. And as the excitement, you know, all happened, you know, Hey, 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 come on, I'll say! Hey, 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 hey! Suddenly, this big blonde fella stuck his finger in the little fella's ear, like, you know, Ah, he's like, get half, get half. He said, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Then they just sat the game, I all get excited. Oh, I'll say, come on, I'll say! I'll say, hey! This big blonde fella again, he stuck his finger in the little... Get yeah, half, will you? He said, I'm terribly sorry, he said. I'm terribly, I do apologise. See, why, why, why don't you go and watch your own game? No, I'm terribly, he's there. I am not of your planet. He said, what do you mean, I'm not? Well, he said, I'm not from the planet Earth. He said, I'm from the planet Venus. I'm a Venusian. Well, he said, you, you, you want to tell your missus to give it? He said, we don't have missuses. There. No, he said, there, there are no he's or she's on Venus, just an it, and I'm one. <laughs> he said, no, 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 missus, missus, no, no he's, no she's, just it's, and I'm an it. So the little fellow said, well, he said, how do you, uh... he said, oh, easy, he said, oh, no! <laughs> it's been lovely working for you, ladies and gentlemen, at your party. I love, I, actually, this is, uh, this is not really work, you know. I used to go to work, I used to be a coal man. My brother, our Billy, we were a coal man, uh, until I was 17 and a quarter. I remember the day I left, actually, because we, were, we, we had the horse and cart out, and we were going down through the streets, old one, and suddenly this lady stuck her head out of the seventh story block of glass. She said, Yui! The horse and cart was a road. So I backed up the cart, got the on the way to coal on my back, and away I went. And I thought, by Jesus, seven stories. On the way to coal. 112 pounds, Mrs., because I'm not metric, you see. I got up the first flight. I thought, by Jesus, this is idiot. I thought, the second flight. Oh, this is the heaviest bag of coal I've ever carried. Got the third flight. I thought, I'll never make it. Got the fourth flight. My knees were buckling. Got the fifth flight. I can't stand it. Got the sixth I turned round and found I had the horse by the ears. <laughs> we, we wish you a very happy and peaceful 1982, ladies and gentlemen. We wish you a magical new year. We wish you peace prosperity, and lots and lots of happiness! The greatest gift that we possess I thank the Lord that I've been blessed With more than my share of our happiness To me this world is a wonderful place I'm the luckiest human in the human race I've got no silver and I've got no gold but I've got a happiness in my soul Happens to me in the ocean tide The sunset fading on a mountain sun A big old heaven full of stars above When I'm in the arms of the one I love Oh, happiness, happiness The greatest gift that we possess I thank the Lord that I've been blessed With more than my share of happiness Happiness the greatest gift that we possess I thank the Lord that I be blessed With more than my share of happiness More than my share of happiness